Neil deGrasse Tyson shared frightening news with the world. Our universe was very probably born in a black hole, and we possibly live in a black hole until today without noticing it. Does this disprove the Big Bang Theory? And why is this truth the proof for the multiverse? The answers to these questions will change your picture of the universe forever. Mysterious Giants – Black Holes Black holes are a fascination of science. They exist, there is no question about it, but no scientist has ever actually seen one, because black holes are invisible. They consist of a substance which escapes our eyes. It becomes perceptible only by its immense weight with which it bends space-time. By the curvature, black holes attract like magnets all matter into their proximity and suck them in. What is going on inside the black holes is a secret of science. We can only guess or calculate it with the equations of general relativity. Scientists speak of a singularity, a concentration of all matter, on only one point. Did you know that scientists have calculated that also our universe has originated from such a single point? Strange agreement, or… We live in a black hole. A quote from Neil deGrasse Tyson. It tells us that a whole new space-time can form inside a black hole in the future of the universe. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the popular astrophysicist from the USA, put it in a nutshell. Scientists have calculated that every black hole has the potential to create a new universe within itself. At first, this sounds staggering. But if we take a closer look at the nature of black holes, this assumption seems logical. We know that black holes suck up gigantic amounts of matter inside stars, planets, gas clouds, and dust disks are decomposed into their original components, and these components are energy and information at the base. Quantum physics teaches us that information, as a basic component of matter, can never be destroyed. Let's make a jump. We look at the beginning of the universe as scientists explain it to us. There exists nothing but a potential concentrated on a single point. A tiny point, which is called singularity, contains all the information which it needs to let a complete universe come into being. We'll take another leap. Scientists imagine the end of our universe in different ways. A common and coherent theory says that at the end of the universe, gigantic black holes will have sucked in all matter and will hoard the information potential of the entire cosmos. But what then? Is it unlikely that the universe then remains in a rigid state? Much more likely is a constant movement, reshaping, and further development. If all matter is concentrated at one point in a gigantic black hole, where are we then? Exactly. We are at this one point, this singularity, from which our universe was born. Sir Roger Penrose already put forward many years ago the theory of the cyclic universe. A cosmos which is born, expands, ends, and we are born again. The newest theory of the life in a black hole goes even a bit further. The Proof of the Multiverse Information is an interesting quantity in the world of quantum physics. If we look closely at the nature of information, it is not at all the case that at the end of the universe, all information must be concentrated in a single large black hole for a new universe to emerge. Theoretically, this is possible in all black holes. There is much speculation about what black holes really are. Initially, they were thought to be wormholes or portals to other dimensions. Among science fiction enthusiasts, these ideas persist to this day. Physicists do not know until today exactly what black holes really are. It's only clear that they absorb large amounts of information and do not give it away again, at least not in our universe. Here we come to the point, because somewhere this information must nevertheless go, if it is at once not destructible and secondly, in this universe cannot escape from the black hole anymore. As with a mystic mirror, it's possible that the information which disappears here appears again in another universe. Each black hole in our universe can thus potentially be a gateway to a new, separate universe. If this is true, then we live in a multiverse and black holes are portals to these other worlds after all. Inside and outside a black hole Another circumstance that supports this assumption is a strange mirroring of the world, outside a black hole and inside a black hole. We don't know that much about the inside of black holes, but some values can be calculated thanks to Einstein's relativity equations. A prominent feature of all black holes is the event horizon, 
a boundary beyond which there is no escape for matter. What gets behind the event horizon does not return from there. Let us now explore together the world inside and outside the black hole, and you'll be amazed. Outside the event horizon of a black hole, an object clearly feels the gravitational effects of the hole. Matter is attracted to black holes, yet an object outside the black hole could still escape if it is attracted by another force or can accelerate in such a way that it resists the forces of attraction. However, once an object crosses over to the other side of the event horizon, no force or acceleration rate existing in this universe can wrestle it from the gravitational pull of the black hole. It is doomed to be absorbed into the central singularity of the black hole. Black holes gain weight from the mass they suck in. So, something must be going on inside them that we don't yet understand. Let's look at a few more interesting quantities. If we take all known forms of matter and radiation in the observable universe, we would have normal matter made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Ghostly neutrinos, which go their very own ways and rarely interact with normal matter. Dark matter, which dominates the mass of the universe, but cannot yet be directly detected. Photons and light particles, or quanta, which carry energy from any electromagnetic event, and gravitational waves. Currently, we can see in all directions up to about 46 billion light years away. If we now take all the energy and mass from the entire observable universe together, we arrive at an equivalent mass for the universe using Einstein's famous formula, E equals mc squared. Next, we ask an interesting question. What would happen if all of this were compressed into a single point? The answer is the same as if any mass or energy were compressed to a point. Any mass at that moment corresponds to all masses. The physical result is the same. This single point would then computationally form a black hole. As inside, so outside. Einstein's theory of gravitation describes how mass curves the space around it. The Schwarzschild radius is a term from this theory and refers to the size of a non-rotating and non-charged black hole based on its mass or the distance between the singularity inside and the event horizon. If you were to hypothetically take the entire mass of the observable universe and turn it into a black hole, then amazingly the Schwarzschild radius of that black hole would be almost exactly as large as the observable universe itself. This is an intriguing coincidence that raises the question of whether our universe might actually be the equivalent of the interior of a black hole. If we dive even deeper into this consideration, it gets even more interesting. In the 1960s, scientists made an amazing discovery. They found that everywhere in the sky, there was some kind of faint radiation coming at us from every direction. This was like finding a soft light shining everywhere in the universe. This radiation had the same temperature in all directions of about 2,725 Kelvin, or negative 270.425 degrees Celsius, making it just above absolute zero. The way this radiation emitted light is called the black body spectrum, and its shaping clearly indicated that the newly discovered weak radiation must have originated from something that was uniformly hot, like a glowing piece of metal, and had since cooled. As the hot origin of the radiation, scientists have identified the Big Bang and the radiation itself we know as the cosmic microwave background. Both are considered crucial evidence that our universe is expanding and cooling, or that the universe was hotter and denser in the past. The further back we go, the smaller, more uniform, and more compact things were. If we go all the way back, we approach the singularity and thus the same state found in the central interior of black holes. At the singularity, matter becomes so dense and temperatures rise to ranges that the laws of our known physics break down. If we look at the equations that describe a black hole, something remarkable happens. The Schwarzschild radius, r, is the distance from the center of the black hole to its event horizon. If we start outside the event horizon and take the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole as the distance r, we arrive at a point at infinity. From this we can draw two conclusions. The distance from the event horizon to the singularity inside corresponds to infinity in the material world. Consequently, a black hole leads to infinity. Moreover, all the properties of space outside the event horizon of a black hole are intriguingly identical to the properties of space inside a black hole. If we calculate with the Schwarzschild radius r and some other quantities, 
we get a perfect reflection of the outside of the black hole, and vice versa. The picture is comparable to taking a sphere, which is 100% reflecting, like a perfect mirror, therefore. Then we notice that the totality of the universe, which is outside of the sphere, is found distorted in the mirror image, which is reflected on the surface of the sphere. These discoveries shook the foundations of cosmology. New calculations created a whole new model of the beginning of the universe based on this knowledge. Rather than having originated from a singularity, it's much more likely that the universe was set up in basic terms by a rapid state of constant exponential expansion. This matrix preceded even the hot Big Bang. If this is true, there must be some field that provided an energy that inflated a space. This field could be the space itself, and only when this has already established itself, it came to the hot Big Bang. This would make quite a few theories about expansion in space-time wrong, and we will have to wait and see what further studies and observations will show, including by the new James Webb Space Telescope. Press the subscribe button, because there are still many highlights to come.